What you're doing in the running out seasons is very important. If you go around bitter, discouraged, trying to get even, that's going to keep you where you are. About six months after he was fired, he He sent me a list of declarations that he made every day. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I will look in triumph at those that have hated me. What was meant for my harm, God is turning to my advantage. Tell me, I want to hasten my process so that I can get to an expected end. But that cannot be done. Because a blessing given too soon is not a blessing at all. I can give my son the car keys now and tell him to go to the store. But had I given it to him when he was five, it would not have been a blessing at all. Same car, same son, given too soon. He can't handle it. So would I be a good father if I gave him a good thing too soon? Sometimes my goodness is proven by my ability to say not yet. The younger brother, the prodigal son, teaches us emphatically that if we get what is ours too soon, We cannot handle it. That the same thing that should make us praise the Father will drive us away from the Father if we get it. Listen at this. In this quick age where we want everything now, if we don't get it now, we quit. Give it some time. Give it some focus. Until you can clap for the seedling, you will never see the tree. Because you're so busy trying to compete with the trees that you haven't gone through the process of the acorn. We think about our lives in decades. I was from the 60s, but we plan our lives in days. Very few people have a plan for the next 10 years. You're in love with tomorrow, but you're neglecting today. And when God sees you neglecting today, he will not give you tomorrow. But until you learn how to appreciate where you are in the process, you won't get the power to evolve to your ultimate destiny. So you need to take your eye off of the tree and water what you got now. When you want something out of life, don't worry about how you're going to get it. The most difficult thing it is, is to hold the vision. You want to be persistent about what it is that you want to achieve promising yourself you will never give up. I asked the kids, how long should a baby try to learn how to walk? How long would you give your average baby? How many times will your baby attempt to walk and fall and you just say, just sit down, don't try anymore. You've fallen 20 times. Any mother in the world would say, you're crazy. My baby is going to keep trying what? Until, what a magic word, until. Don't get caught up in, well, I've tried it five times and things didn't work out. If there's something that you want and you're hungry for it, you've got to do whatever is necessary until. And don't give up on yourself. Many people give up on the one yard line. Oh, no, no, no. See, life is not just that simple. And that's why most people never realize their personal greatness. They're casual about life. And when you are casual about life, you will end up a casualty. Promise yourself you'll read the books until your skills change. You'll go for it until you understand it. You'll practice it until you develop the skill. However long that is, step by step, piece by piece, book by book, go for it. Don't miss the chance to grow. No matter how long it takes or how difficult it is, when it's all said and done, you'll be able to say, I'm still standing. I know I am a victor and not a victim. I'm having some big challenges, but I know I serve a big God. I know I've been armed with strength for every battle. As long as God has given me breath to breathe, I'm going to keep pressing forward, believing for his very best. How can you measure the success of a year if you don't have a long-term goal in mind? You evaluate the year, not whether good or bad happens in the year. People are going to die this year. People are going to get sick this year. Things are going to happen to you that's not fair this year. That happens every year. There will be no magic years as it relates to life. There will be no years like that. There's always going to be shocking news and there's always going to be years full of good and bad. Nothing that has happened to you can keep you from your God-given destiny. God would not have allowed it unless he had a divine purpose. 
God said, I will take the bad things and make them work for your good if you have purpose. If you keep your mind on what your purpose is, they'll curse you and I'll make it a blessing. They'll walk over top of you and I'll choose you and bring you from the back row to the front row. There's always going to be somebody crazy in your family. It's always going to be somebody who don't want to treat you right. That is life. Look back over 10 years in your life, what happened? And what have you learned from it? If you don't learn from what you lost, you have no profit. Why would you have that much pain and no profit? I want this year to propel me into my destiny. If it's just but one step, I want to make one step closer so that when I get to the next 10 years, I am ready for that stage of my life. This will be a transformative year. It is not the movement of the clock that produces the newness of life. It is the movement in your mind. God is about to transform your thinking, your mindset. The enemies that you see today, you will see them no more. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. The Lord said that there's more inside of you than what you have perceived. I'm tired of doing what I used to do. If I always do what I've always done, I'll always be where I've always been. I'm going to throw it behind me. This is your year of transformation. Don't let the habits of my past stop me from this metamorphosis. What separates us is transformation. The passion to get up off the ground and stop eating dirt. This is my time. In other words, there were behaviors and thoughts you've had in the past that were needed to produce the results you currently have. But you need to stop what's no longer needed. So ask yourself that question. What do I need to drop that's no longer needed? Is it a behavior? Is it a person? One of those things you probably are carrying with you from the past but that thought, that behavior, that person is no longer needed for you to go to the next level of your identity, the next level of yourself. If you're stuck, you're stuck in a story. Right now if you say, Ed, I'm kind of stuck where I am. Well, what you need to do is you need to alter your associations. You need to do something in a short window of time and evaluate the story you're telling yourself. Maybe it's a story about your past, a story about your parents, a story about a success you used to have. You keep talking about that doesn't serve you to get to the next level. Every second you spend in that old story about what you've achieved, some business you had, every time you live in that story, you're stripping time and focus from the new story. What's the old story you keep repeating? Maybe it's not a success. Maybe it's a failure that you've had. You can't take that old story into the new identity. What's your new story? Who are you now? See, here's what's amazing. At any point in your life, you can just decide to write a new script. And guess what? You and God control the script. Listen to me. At any time you want, you can simply decide to be a new character. Stop telling the old story. Here's the truth. Nobody cares. And that old character you keep playing is the very thing that will prevent you from becoming this new version of you. Just awareness of the power of identity puts you in the 0.1% of all the people on the spinning earth right now. You know, it's amazing how hardworking, smart working people have all the luck and overnight success. But if you've ever watched an interview with some of these folks, you'll probably hear that their overnight success took several years. Diligence is the mother of good luck. Happiness doesn't come from big pieces of great success, but from small advantages hammered out day by day. We must be happy with what we've got when we're in pursuit of what we want. Too often we say, I'll be happy when I just have more money. Oh, I'll be happy when I just get that promotion. You won't be any happier when you reach your goals than you are right now. Abraham Lincoln said it best. He said, you'll be as happy as you make up your mind to be. Being happy on the way doesn't mean you can't aim for great things. It means that big achievements come one small advantage at a time. It means that you must enjoy and take pride in your little accomplishments. Every day, every single day, success is a pleasure. 
If what you are doing today isn't satisfying, gratifying, guess what? You're really not successful. It doesn't matter how many worldly possessions you may have, how many cars, how many toys. If you're not happy with your life as it is, you cannot be successful. To a school kid, success may mean a star on top of his latest test. To an outside professional, it's most likely the thrill of closing a major contract. But the one thing you will hear from everyone who is successful is that they are happy with who they are and what they are doing. Success is a pleasure. What have you done today that makes this day successful? If at the end of the day you can jot down the things that have made it a good day, you will soon see patterns forming. When you can see a pattern of pleasure, you'll know you're on the road to success. Success is measured through pleasure. You've got to be happy along the way. Good job, you need to tell yourself. I'm proud of me today. You've got to learn to enjoy the process. William James described success as a combination of two things. An inner ideal which is followed persistently with courage. I take that to mean defining a goal and having the resolve to complete it. Promise yourself you'll read the books until your skills change. Go to the seminars until you get a handle on it. Practice it until you've got it right. Step by step, piece by piece, book by book. Do it until. Don't miss the chance to grow, to pay the price. Until you learn. You'll discover some of life's great treasures when you pay that price. Go for it. And number two, outer achievement related to that ideal. But what Dr. James realized was that the first part is indeed more important than the second. As long as you're working toward your inner goal, your dream, then success is possible. Now, maybe the person who's been working on a project for 10 years can be successful in his own right. If he's honestly working toward it, really happy with where he is, doing it until going for small accomplishments along the way for however long it takes. You'll start to see things change around you, little things, not major things. If you're one of those who'd rather stay up late and get up late, and you roll out of bed cursing the alarm clock every morning, maybe you could start with the little change of going to bed half an hour earlier than normal. Maybe you'll find out that you jump out of bed in a better mood and that you'll get more done. It all starts by making one little change. You see, you can't change what's going on around you without first changing what's going on within you. When you start changing how you think, how you act, how you treat yourself, when you start responding instead of reacting to life, life will start responding to you. You cannot believe what can happen in such a short period of time. You don't have to worry about the winds that will most certainly blow around you, the obstacles. You don't have to worry about what other people will say. Those winds may blow fast and furious, but if you know your path, they will help push you toward the dreams and treasures that you have already decided you're going after. There are some amazing people around that we can learn from today. People who have already braved the storms and come out on top. People who started with nothing and ended up with something great. People who turned their focused dreams into the reality of success. Stories of success are all around us. Take the time to talk to these people or read their stories. You might find out that they have already traveled the path you are now on. Many of these people have written books on their journeys. These books tell the stories and give the secrets that we can all learn from. Let's say you want to go away to a place you've never been before. Wouldn't you want to find someone who had been there? What's the best way to get there, the safest route? What do I need to bring to be totally prepared? What dangers do I need to avoid? It's the same thing with life. By listening to those who are farther along in the journey, the journey you are interested in taking, you just might pick up something that will make your journey that much better. They can provide that extra push you've been looking for. They've been there. Their knowledge is valuable. 
Now, most of us want to believe that we're independent, that if we set our minds to do something, simply, it can get done. Unless you look to others, you can work twice as hard to get half as much. Ask for help, not because you're weak, but you want to remain strong. And ask for help and don't stop until you get it. And so I started talking to other people who had gone through my experience and we became support for each other. There is no self-made man. There is nothing wrong with asking for what you want. And I started doing research, trying to find out what are the things that I need to do. I started reading everything I could. I started asking people questions, people who had already gone through it. I talked to everybody. I researched. I became actively involved in the process. You've just got to be a good student and gather the material and the books as you go along. Even on my farm now, I've built a room for a library for 2000.